I'm at Murray Bridge and I've got a chance to momentarily catch up with Adam Hansen before the start of stage four of the Tour Down Under of 2024. This is just a quick pre-race chit chat about a few things that are going on and what his new job is. So uh, the next picture will feature one of my favourite bike riders and one of the, the big time administrators of cycling in 2024. Thanks for taking a quick moment. I don't mean to catch you while you've got a lot of work to do, but um, can you just give us a quick overview of your, uh, or the remit of this trip, let's say. What are you up to while you're in Adelaide? So my job is just to make sure the riders are okay. Um, so if we're talking about today, um, there was a crash yesterday on the, the the, the George Rule, mm -hmm. um, and then okay, I had some riders sort of complain afterwards, you know, like why why is it finished directly after the George Road? It's such a dangerous road, and and we understand it's an iconic part of the race, and and how about we you know have a mid stage or something like this? Um, and I'm also working with the Safer Commission, which is the new uh, commission for cycling for safety in cycling, and they want me to do a report on the crash. So I'll be going to um, basically Astana, Bahrain. Um, also Jayco, because I think they were the main riders involved. Astana had, I think, four guys involved. And just find out how the crash happened, because we want to start doing reports on the crashes and try and sort of eliminate these uh, incidents. So really break it down and to, to find out the real reasons of the crashes um, and interview the riders, and this is part of it. So um, and because I'm here, I'll be doing this. Um, so SAFE has got a different commission also, and they'll be, mm -hmm. SAFE is a project where we have be like doping control for organizers it's gonna be really good actually so they'll randomly go to races and what they'll do is to make sure everything's done in check and have some special let's say standardization and what what i mean by that is if you do the giro which Who's is that safe safer safer safe is the name yeah. so for example if you do the giro which is an rsc race and they have their own setup and method and how they do things mm -hmm. and you spend three weeks of that race and then you go and do dauphin air one week later which is an ASL race, they do things very different. Um, and it's not saying one does things badly, it's more about how about we just all do everything the same so the riders understand in the same way. So a small example is, and you see it here, when there's an island in the middle of the road, does a policeman stand behind the obstacle, like the sign, or in front of it, or 10 metres in front, so it's all the same for the riders. So just with today, that's the, my, my first job is to interview these riders, why the crash happened, and, and, and what we're going to do is collect all this information and basically try and eliminate in the future, so more, more prevention in the future. So um, that's the first part of my role. And just to walk around and see um, if the riders are okay. And, um, and this morning, it's not so much a big job. It's more to make sure that they know I'm here. And if, if it is going to be a hot day and then we have to discuss the extreme weather protocol, um, I'll have to do a, a talk with the race organizer, the team representatives of UCI about that. Um, also, like the first day I was here, uh, I made sure the Shimano cars had um, extra water bottles in there and cokes and things like that. So, because we want to, let's say, uh, uh, not let it get hot and then cancel the stage. We want to try and minimize it and, and help the riders. So, so first I was go to Shimano cars. Do you have all the waters like them before and they acknowledge that so then I went to all the teams that okay if the riders don't have time to go back to you for cold water mm -hmm. they can just go to Shimano cars and the Shimano cars are everywhere um, there's about, I think there's four or five of them and the race is really good and because this race only has one car per team um, if you're in a breakaway mm -hmm. um, you can rely on the Shimano car and if you all of your car is in the breakaway with you the whole team can rely on Shimano car so they can get good cooling and things like that and it's more educating the riders in that sense um, small thing yesterday, rider with a sprint jersey was too big, he wanted a smaller size, so I fixed little things like this and um, and there was a bit of a concern with the George Road also yesterday if, um, if it was clean in the, the final, so I did a recon of the last eight kilometers, that was all okay and I flicked the message to a few uh, DS's that are asking this question. Um, I don't have to do this, this type of thing if a DS asks me because I work for the riders yeah. but I know it's for the riders so of course I'll do it and I had the time but mm. because um, we had a bit of a, um, I will add some free time between the start and finish so um, things like that, that's, that's basically the little things that I do here and then in the evenings I, I talk to the riders so what I do is I make an hour and a half free time after dinner they can come and go, ask questions of where they want the CPA to move forwards. Mm -hmm. um, I talk to them about uh, the new SAFER project, which I just mentioned about. We're going to have red and yellow card system um, coming in. So um, I'll introduce them more about that and just answer any questions that they want to hear. Okay. 
So, I mean, it is, it's totally for the right of the jaw here. You're trying to make conditions better. We saw a strange circumstance in McLaren Vale, for example, when the women were racing to, uh, to what Old Belunga Hill, where there were some trucks on the side of the road and, and things like that. I don't know if you were quiet in Australia at that point, but, you know, like, unfortunately, your job is going to basically be a continuation of what you experienced last year where you make a comment and then suddenly there's a flurry of social media yes. <laughs> uh, vitriol let's say it's not terribly kind people do tend to sort of make out as though you're able to fix things in an instant uh what do you do in scenarios like that do you you know it, did you see the trucks for example in mclaren vale did you comment on it and and what can be done to it you know, negate that in the future. Yeah, so I was meant to be here for the women's race, but um, Cathay Pacific has a shortage of pilots, so my flight was cancelled and I was um, I was uh, three days late coming in. Um, so I, I missed that, but uh, on stage one, um, there was cars on the side of the road here also, um, so I took images of that, and this goes back to the SAFER committee um, I was talking about before, um, because this should not be on the road. Um, car, truck, the same situation. All you need is a, a crash in the middle of the road where the rider spread out and can hit a car. That's actually happened to me um, once. Um, so um, this is definitely one thing that we um, that we have to um, work out a better solution. Um, and, and not to keep talking about safer, but this project is good because we have one person from every stakeholder. So we have um, RSC from Terry, who's the race director, and, and he's he's very good, and he has really good ideas of how to uh, do course design and also how to deal with these situations, how to have motorbikes come in and out so they don't always have to go through the peloton. Um, and we sort of use this, use this information and experience from these guys and sort of bring it down to the smaller races. So even though we're helping the top races, UCI regulations is for all races. So this would really help for all bike races. And then uh, just on the equipment front, I don't know if you've got anything to do with the angle lever, that's the story of the equipment yep. uh, uh, component of the early season. Uh, did you have some hand play in what's yes. going on there? So um, even though I'm president of the CPA, I'm also um, on the uh, Equipments Commission in the UCI. Um, from re just representing the riders is the different role that I have. So we have um, quarterly meetings about all the different new equipments that's come out um, and uh, just topics on this. And I did a survey at the Giro with all the riders on where the brake hoods should be. And I gave them a choice of straight, I think it was like three degrees, five degrees, sorry, straight, um, five degrees, 10 degrees and extreme. And there was only like 3% that wanted the full extreme. Um, a lot of riders were commenting on there were a lot of crashes or close crashes. And that's the thing. You think it's because of the lever position? Yes. Um, it's not because of the, the lever position when they're on there. Uh -huh. It's when they have to brake. When you're on the hoods, you cannot reach the brakes properly. So okay. you really have to you have to really have to rotate your wrist to get the brakes, um, and that's not your natural position. So it's not like you're on the brakes; you've got to actually reach for it. And by that time, mm. it's too late. And riders identify this is this is the advantage that the CPA or I have is that I have eyes in the peloton. I see these 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 almost crashes that don't happen. And if it does not happen, no one sees it. The riders see it, but mm. no one sees it. And this is very useful information. So the riders were mostly against having these extreme positions. Um, and then I was working with Michael Rogers at the UCI. Then we found out when he did some more checks that um, the handlebars weren't designed to have the brakes like this. So there were some cracks on the handlebars also, which, which made it worse because the cracks were actually at the bottom. So I'm sure you know yep. the system. At the bottom of, so there's, normally there's, there's a metal um, wrap that goes around the, 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 the brake and of the handlebar, and it was cracks at the bottom. So if you're standing sprinting up a mm. hill, you're putting heaps of load on it, mm. Crazy to crack, don't know. Maybe at the end of the race when you're sprinting on your drops, that's above, uh, you're holding underneath the crack, and that could be a fatal accident. So um, once he identified that, then we look, when the, then they did an investigation on um, the Shimano hoods with a few handlebars, and then they found out there was greater stress points the more inwards they were in. And then we tested, well, they sorry, they tested um, all the different companies with different handlebars. And yes, there's a big difference um, when you change. The handlebars are just not designed for it. So then we um, came to, let's say, a, um, 
but I, I've got it from like FSA have suggested that it, there's no uh, impact on their handlebars. So yeah, some do and some yeah. So but the thing is in cycling, you you have to draw a line and yeah. make it fair across the board, uh -huh. and that goes the same with the six point eight kilo rule. You know, mm -hmm. some bikes are strong six point six point six kilos, yep. where some bikes are not. So they they really create this let's say large because it's six point eight kilos today you can make a very good bike but um, it's it's a nice it's a nice let's say uh, line to draw where everything beyond that is safe and if we have this position on handlebars where it's 10 percent it's safe on all handlebars um, so <clears throat> this is why it's, can I just yep. interject just someone's also suggested that it could potentially be that SRAM and Shimano which are the main suppliers for the world tour for example uh, had issues with the kinking of their hydraulic hoses have you heard anything about that um, yes, so there was, um, I, I do remember the talk of the kicking of the hoses, um, but I don't remember which brand it was, so if it was Shimano, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, then that's definitely, th because the hoses are designed to, so you have the hydraulic, hydraulic brakes as a hose, and if you bend a cable hose, it's just not nice, but bending a hydraulic hose is something very different, yeah. <laughs> especially on a brake, um, and they were designed to be more straight, so once you start bending it, then they have to be wrapped more around the handlebars, more stress on the hose, and um, so this wasn't ideal either. But it wasn't a request from Shimano per se that sort no. of got you looking at that uh, no. extreme position. It was yes. more concerns about safety. Well, definitely safety. But what's worse is um, all the rules and regulations of the pros is exactly the same for the under 19s, yes. under 17s, under 16s. Yep. And the UCI was seeing that the 16 year old kids all had their brakes in because the pros do. And this is what we got to avoid. But we're not just doing safety on, on the pros, we're doing safety across the board on all UCI races. And this is why it's very important. Um, there's no, the UCI, does, uh, sorry, the World Tour does not have any special rules um, uh, over the, the oh, except for the gear ratio back in the days and stuff like this. Um, the, there's no difference. So we're trying to make it uh, safe across the board. Okay, I understand that. When the communication comes out from the UCI and they start sort of, you know, suggesting it's handlebar failure that's the driving force of this change. Is it not better for them just to say, look, we want a bike to look more like a bike. Uh, we want <laughs> juniors to ride more in a, in a more common sense manner. Uh, you know, things like this. Is, is it, I mean, how do you do the communication? Because otherwise you end up in a situation where people are, you know, screaming into the void with frustrations for yeah. one reason or another. Yeah, definitely true. Um, but, you know, we can, we can sort of go and say, you know, like, like in these hot days, why should cyclists have sleeves? You know, uh -huh. that, that's also traditional. Yeah. Um, and and do we want riders to start riding without sleeves and super high socks? And um, and I think um, that is one of the the beauty things. Like you, you, you're right. Um, um, it is nice that professional cycling looks professional, and it's really nice it looks professional. Like everyone looks professional. Yes. I think that's very good. Um, and and we just want to yeah, safety is the number one priority. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as someone who innovated, I would say, quite dramatically with product when you were racing, you know, with your narrow handlebars and all things and with crank lengths and all sorts of things that we've discussed in the past, how do you feel about it? If you were riding today, would you have inward uh, tilted uh, levers? Um, I'd have it maybe a little bit, like on my bike now. I have it very little, but nothing like what we saw. Like some of the images that, um, that we had. Do you remember Chinelli bars? Yes. It's just like that. The Spinacci bars. The Spinacci, so yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, the guys had it just like that. It's uh, way too extreme. Okay. There, there was positions where guys were really like this, on yeah. their, you know, having head. And that's, you don't want riders basically on TT bikes in the middle of the peloton. That's what we're trying to avoid. Okay. All right. Well, I don't mean to harp on about it, but that mm -hmm. is a talking point for yep. this year. So. I'm going to let you get back to the race. Thank and you. Thanks very much for a long explanation of your visit and uh, I look forward to catching up again soon. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.